Tomorrow, you have a test. 25 questions, all multiple choice. Make sure you're ready to go. You have a focus due tomorrow. And all of your primaries. Turn in your damn primaries. You're not losing stupid points, people. All right, here we go on your whiteboard. Please tell me, what is it called when, uh, comp when one group of people own, like the New York Times, the New York Post, Good Housekeeping Magazine, um, Cosmopolitan Magazine, all these things. What is it, Ellie? Chain ownership. Chain ownership. Okay. <clears throat> Leo is interviewing me, and I don't want to say my name, so I say what phrase. He can say what I'm telling him. He can't use my name. What's it called, Luke? Off the record. Off the record. On your whiteboard. Please tell me. What is it called when... The journalists are flagrantly lying to gain more attention. Good. Eve. Yellow journalism. On your whiteboard, please tell me, what is the traditional mass media mode? It was going to be around for about 400 years. It's going to be the most powerful information. Oliver, open up your notes and look, damn buff. What is it, Jade? Newspapers. Newspapers. Newspapers are going to be replaced by what? Good. Eve. Radio. Radio will be replaced by what? That's the number one. Good. Colin. There you go. Which platform? Um, mass media is going to have the furthest conservative lean. What platform? Don't tell me CNN. Uh, don't tell me Fox News. I'm looking at platform. Good. Ash. Radio. Radio. As more channels that are conservative than they are liberal. On your whiteboard. CBS, NBC, ABC, and Fox are all given the title of what? Good. What am I looking for, Rinkus? Network. Network News. CNN, Fox News, MSNBC, CNBC. Get the title of what, Leo? Cable. Cable News. On your whiteboard, most people get their news from what? No. What is it, Ellie? Local news. All right, here we go. So what I would like you to do, white hat, you're in, where do we leave off? Local news is where people get the most? Oh, okay. All right, here we go. Okay, where do Americans get their news? You need to know that Americans get their news from local news the most. Okay, Americans choose local news. Now, if you look at this diagram, which I think is actually pretty cool, uh, you'll see that it does not equal 100%. <laughs> it does not equal 100% because people look at multiple things in order to get their news. If you're in your car, you look at your phone. If you're at home, you turn on the TV, those types of things, and that's taking it all into a factor. All right, your next heading is the White House. Oh, actually, uh, that's fine. The White House, you need to know, in the White House, they use press release, press briefing, and press conferences. We're going to talk about the difference. Okay, here we go. You need to know the difference between, uh, press release is a document. Okay, so if the president wants to announce that today is national... Benedict. Isn't it Day of the Dead? Isn't today officially a Day of the Dead? All Hallows Eve, that's why Halloween's Halloween. Right? Anyway, okay. So if the uh, celebrities use press releases all the time when they announce that they've like broken up with their boyfriend, girlfriend, or marriage, or divorces and stuff like that, they do a press release. It's a formal document that they publish, and there's no interaction with the actual celebrities. It's just a piece of paper that tells you, hey, we're getting a divorce. Press briefing is when the press secretary interacts with the media. 
And every Monday through Friday, she uh, makes her press briefing at 9 a.m. every day. And her press briefing, and I can't think of her name at the moment. Huh? Huh? Uh, leads press briefings. Every day at 9 a.m., the White House has a press briefing. What? Yes, it is. Yes. Uh, I think they what, call her CGT? Uh, CGP? Anyway, yeah. Anyway, she has a press briefing every day at 9 a.m. She stands in front of the media and tells them what the president is doing that day. At 9 o'clock, the president is speaking to the president of Mexico. At 10 o'clock, he is meeting with the labor unions. At 1.15, he's talking to the Finnish president, whatever they're doing. She stands there and answers questions, okay? So, in a press briefing, it is the press secretary answering questions and telling the media things. And then we have a press conference. So the difference between a press briefing and a press conference is the president is there or whatever political figure is there. The person of interest is in the room answering questions. So. Press briefing, it's just their secretary or their publicist. If you're talking about celebrities in a press conference, it's the actual celebrity or the president in the room. And that's the big difference between them. Okay. When you're doing a press conference, you need to know that they, um, they're able to ask questions directly. All right. You need to put a big star. You need to know that American media is controlled by private entities. Put a star. American media is controlled by private entities. Ash, what does that mean, private entities? Like private companies. There you go. There you go. They're private companies, which means they're owned by individuals. Good thing or bad thing, Ash? Bad thing. Mm, pro con. It's a pretty good thing. Overall, I'm going to say it's a good thing. Okay. Why is the government, uh, nope, why is it that the media is controlled by private entity? What would be a good thing about it, Leo? Uh, the, government. the government is not controlling it. Write it down, right? Pros, cons, pros. The government doesn't get to control, okay? Pro, the media can criticize the government. Is that a good thing? Yes, absolutely. We have to be able to criticize our government. If we cannot criticize our government, we don't live in a free state. And I personally like living in a free state, so let's keep it. Okay, another, pr uh, what are some cons to having uh, private media companies? What's a con of it, Haley? It's very biased. It's very biased, and one person can have huge influence, so eh, not so great. Okay, what's another con, Colin? Um. I would say that kind of goes to bias. We'll leave it under the bias column. Anything else? Mia? Yeah? There's really only six people who control all of America's media. How does that make you feel? Yeah. So very small numbers of major power players. That is a huge con of it. So six people get to make pretty much all the decisions of things we care about. What is the opposite of privately owned media, Oliver? What's the term for it? It's not wrong, but what's a better term for it? What would be a better term for government owned? It's called state run media, write it down. State run media. State run media is when the government controls all the media. Now here in the United States, the uh, U.S. government runs C-SPAN and CBS, uh, PBS New, PBS Channel. Does that mean they run, huh? Yeah, because it's supposed to, like Sesame Street, Daniel Tiger, all those other things are on PBS. Uh, it's supposed to be there for poor families can still get access to good quality education. That's why they publish it on PBS, okay? Does that mean our government runs our media? They control two channels? No, 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 no. So when we talk about state-run media, they control the whole thing. Who can give me, any, Estella, give me an example of a country that has state-run media? Um, Japan, no, Japan does not. They have some wild shit on TV, though. Because I was in Japan this summer, and we just turned on the TV a couple times, and goddamn. 
the shit that was on there. What was happening? wild start to finish we watched like 15 minutes of tv at a time and then we just had to turn it off and decompress was the well we didn't understand it. they were speaking in <laughs> japanese but the the no we were we couldn't figure out the tv we we're too dumb um <laughs> wild wild every channel wild eve north korea would be an example give me another one estella China, write down China. Give me another one. Russia. Oliver. Russia, write down Russia. Colin. Um, uh, I don't know about them. How about Iran? Write down Iran. Oh my God, why do you need to know about China, Russia, and Iran? The AP Comp is in two weeks. Yuck. Uh, British have uh, their hybrid because they have the BBC, which you've obviously heard of, yes? That's British controlled government by the government, but they don't control all aspects. All right, perfect. All right, uh, major focuses of the media. Let's do it. I would write this down because this is what's on your test tomorrow. Media focuses, uh, major focuses of the media. Now, the media gets to decide what Americans talk about. Um, and which ones they don't think. So pro and con, as we just kind of talked about, public versus government. And influencing what issues the public sees as important. If you get turned on the TV and no one is talking about Samantha Bennett's Senate run, okay, you're going to realize that no one cares about it and Samantha Bennett isn't going to win. It's okay. I'm actually not really running. Someone asked me if I was really running for Senate. I said, no, that would be ridiculous. First of all, I don't have the money. Second of all, wouldn't there be signs? Anyway, here we go. Next thing, First Amendment makes it possible for unions and corporations to spend money. What Supreme Court case gives them that right, Rinkus? I know, I saw you staring off into space. Welcome back, bud. Yeah. Yeah, Country it is. FEC. Citizens. Citizens United. There you go. Yeah. Write it down next to it. First Amendment makes it possible for unions and corporations to spend money on candidates running for office. That is Citizens United versus FEC. You also have consumer-driven media. So uh, Fox News is very, very popular, which has spun off into what we call OAR, a whole new thing that is now rivaling Fox News. Because these two, OAR is like number four as in, in popular news. So it's going to make more people want to start doing more conservative news, which will lead to more competition. And then you have a demand for instantaneous news reporting has led to 24-hour news. Why is 24-hour news led, uh, what is 24-hour news led to, Ash? We see more of what in our news? We have more commentary, you're correct, but commentary has allowed what to enter? More to enter. You're right, commentary, but commentary has led to more bias. bias. There you go. So, bias. There's a lot more bias in our news because of the commentators that are now coming in because they have to fill their time, right? 24 hours a day is a long time. So they have to fill their time by having commentators. Those commentators are coming in and putting out their own personal opinion, and that has led to a lot more bias. All right. Do, do, do. All right, let's see. Here we go. Let's see how much you remember. On your whiteboard, answer this question. Three. You're answering this question. What is happening here? The answer is what, Andrew? Irish drink. Andrew had it done way before everyone else. Are you a gummy bear person? What would you like? I doubt you want a Tootsie Roll. These are all the candy I had to steal from Hanky last night when he went to bed. <laughs> I did steal myself two stinkers now. You saw me eat those. The baby does not need to eat gummy bears. He'll choke on them. Gum? Are you kidding me? Who gives up gum? 
Tootsie Rolls, the kid's definitely going to choke on that. Uh, Warheads, Warheads. He's three. <laughs> He's three. He doesn't need to eat warheads. That shit's gross. Anyway, ugh. All right. Prior restraint for a package of gummy bears. Who can give me a clear, concise explanation of prior restraint? Eve. Um, prior restraint is like the white, the pregnant can like withhold the Iron triangle. I would write down what I have up here. You have six questions on the iron triangle on your test tomorrow. I will tell you, this information is very generous. Very generous. Here we go. So the iron triangle. The iron triangle is made up with an executive department, congressional committee, and an interest group. Okay. They work together to make up a new process and structures of policy making. So. So, when we're talking about the Iron Triangle, think about it. Our politicians don't know everything they need to know about um, health care. So, when Obamacare was getting made, they had to go to people who actually knew what they were doing, and that's the Iron Triangle in work. Okay? Just because it's called Obamacare, do you think Obama was the one sitting there making it? No, of course not. It's named Obamacare because it passed during his administration. So when we talk about Obamacare, they, the government doesn't know how to make a health care system because health care systems run health care systems. So an iron triangle was formed where the Obama administration invited in a bunch of interest groups from the health care arena who helped Congress members draft up laws in order to create a health care system. <coughs> It is an incredibly powerful thing. So it's when a bureaucratic agency, it doesn't always have to be the executive branch. It can be, for instance, the Social Security Office. They can do these types of things. So any type of uh, agency of the government, the CIA, the FBI, all of them have iron triangles where they reach out to specific groups of people for more insight and expertise. And congressional committee. It has to have a congressional committee because they need the laws being made. So remember, there are subgroups inside of Congress, and that's what we're referring to. So an example of these working together would be the AARP and the House Subcommittee on Aging and the Social Security Administration coming in and forming up new laws that benefit the elderly here in the United States. Now, Oliver, you've taken practically no notes today. I'm expecting um, a good performance tomorrow. I'll have nothing positive to say. Yes? Are you getting down what you need to have? Okay, well then I'm expecting you to be on the wall tomorrow, yeah? Perfect. Okay, so when we talk about the Iron Triangle, we're dealing with lobbyists, because anytime you have interest groups, you're also getting lobbyists. What is the difference between an interest group and a lobbyist? What do you got? Ellie, what's the difference? Sorry, sorry, she just ate a Starburst. <laughs> sorry, girl. Killing it, girl. Killing it. Killing the game. <coughs> nice. It's perfect. There's nothing else to say. Not going to mess it up. Nice. Okay. Here we go. Answer on your whiteboard. Everyone should be answering on their whiteboard. Let's go. Interesting. Turn to your neighbor and discuss. Go. <laughs> it's a 
factual answer. That's a factual answer. Three, two, one. Show me what you got. Oh, shit. Ryan, what's the answer? Framing. Framing. So if I say, guys, it is going to be the best day ever, we have a test tomorrow. It is going to be so much fun. You're going to have a positive reflection. If I say, holy shit, your lives are awful, and you have a test tomorrow, yes, you're going to be like, oh my god, my life is worse. That's framing. Framing is incredibly important when we're talking about politics. Okay, Politics make people feel better, worse, with the framing that they use. All right, interest groups is your next big sub uh, heading. We only have one more week of AP Gov. How are we feeling? I'm pretty excited about it. I'm ready to transition. I'm over talking about the United do States. Like I do like APCOM because I learned so much last year. It was wild because I didn't know half the shit. Yeah. Absolutely. I didn't know shit about Nigeria. <laughs> I have no idea anything about Nigeria. Mexico, I knew how the country got formed, but I didn't know how it ran today. And that shit's wild. That's wild. Anyway. Here we go. Free rider. Okay, a free rider is an individual who does not join a group representing his or her interest, yet benefits from it. I, Samantha Bennett, am a free rider. I am. I am. I am not in the teachers' union. But guess who benefits? Me. Because I benefit from the contract that they negotiate every single year. I am a free rider. I am the problem. Now, I have reasons why I'm not in the teacher union. I have some reasons why maybe I should be in the teacher union. I can argue both sides. But currently, I'm not in the teacher's union, which makes me a free writer and a mooch. All right. So with that being said, free writer, that's all you need to know. Teacher who isn't in the teacher's union but benefits from the teacher contract from the union, all that. Okay. Interest group tools. So tools that interest groups have at their disposal. First thing is testifying in front of Congress. That's one of the best things that they can do. They testify all the time. Like for instance, one of the most uh, <laughs> jarring congressional meetings, um, a bunch of senators in uh, uh, <coughs> interviewed a bunch of uh, technology titans like Zuckerberg, the guy who actually created Twitter, not Elon Musk, um, a couple other major players in Silicon Valley. And it showed how little our politicians understand about. One of our politicians asked how to access their email. It was very sad. It was very sad. And it shows that there's a huge disconnect between what our government understands and the laws that the government's passing about technology and what is capable. Anyway, so testifying in front of committees, sponsoring advocacy ads. So putting on newspaper and television ads that say, hey, we want, you know, we want this to pass, those types of things. Okay, lobbying, of course. I put a box around lobbying. That's one of their biggest tools. And federal lawsuits is probably their second major tool. Okay, lawsuits are probably their second biggest tool. All right, you need to know that the biggest thing that interest groups provide is expertise. They understand their specific thing better than anyone else. Okay, so if you want to know what education is like, should you go ask the President of the United States? No. You should ask the teachers union that represents teachers from across the country. Okay, major focuses. Major focuses of interest groups. Okay, amicus curiae briefs. You need to know that. When a slide looks like this, it means it's directly from your test. Have you figured that out yet? Okay. So, amicus curiae, they are used by interest groups to lobby courts to help gain the interest. Okay, so amicus curiae briefs are all about getting access points um, in the court system to do an injunction or change the law. Okay, interest groups typically overrepresent wealthy. Why? They've got time and they got money. 
okay? I cannot <laughs> stress enough. Interest groups are powerful because they have lots and lots of money. money. Yes, no one cares about what Samantha Bennett wants because I'm one person and I have no, mm -hmm. I know, my little Amazon jacket that I'm wearing, my little button fell off. And immediately I thought, well, I should have started my button away because I'm not gonna buy a new one. And I'm not gonna sew it on because you know, I ain't got those skills. Anyway, here we go. Second thing you need to know is that the First Amendment makes it possible for unions and corporations to spend money. Rinkus, what? Court case. Oh, brilliant, perfect. I already asked him that question. And then finally, we have multiple interest groups come together for one cause, and that's called a coalition. So, if we have a bunch of interest groups come together, it's a coalition, just like when you have a bunch of countries come together, it's called a coalition. Okay, interest groups uh, move faster and are more effective, while consumer-driven ones are slower. So companies get more than consumer-driven ones because companies are paying for the lobbying and paying way more than consumer-driven ones. Like, for instance, I don't understand why here in the United States we tolerate all the junk food in our food. Have you noticed that? There's lots of chemicals as we're eating junk food. I mean, I just scarfed down Snickers, but it's fine. Um, here in the United States, we tolerate, like, red BGF or something, which every country in the world is banned except for us. That's a consumer-driven one. No one really cares about consumer-driven ones because there's no company behind it with lots of money lobbying for the new changes. But we are about to pass a law through the House about, um, oh, there's a funny one coming through. I can't remember what it is. All right. So, uh, common uh, major interest groups are going to be the Ni Na National Rifle Association, uh, the NEA, which is the National Education Association, uh, the ACLU, which is your American Civil Liberties uh, Union, and then your Teamsters. Teamsters are labor unions. Okay, so these are some examples of interest groups. Remember how you have to have uh, evidence for your essays? Yes? This is what we're talking about. What do you got, Mia? Yeah. Okay. So you need to know uh, interest groups use PACs. They use PACs or political action committees. Interest groups use PACs or political action committees to manage the money. They are regulated by the government to limit corruption. Ish. This is how interest groups move money around. Because what is the, one of the biggest tools interest groups have? Money. Packs are how interest groups move that money around. I wish we were done. Wouldn't that be nice? Do, do, do. Okay. All right, I think. How much time do I have? Six minutes. Uh, I mean, there's other things I could tell you. Okay. You do need to know. We talked about this, though. Hmm. Perfect. Actually, I do want to teach you one more thing. All right, hyperperbolism is something that I do want you to know. That will be very helpful later. Hyperperbolism. Here we go. Hyperperbolism is when the government tries to influence 
Okay, hyperperbolism is when the government tries to do too much and gets nothing done. An example of this would be trying to assist many interest groups that no interest groups get anything done. We see this a lot with the presidential administrations, that they try to change like everything and they can't get anything done. Does that make sense? The Biden uh, uh, White House has been criticized for this. When they came into office two and a half years ago, they wanted to like change the world and like do all these different things, but it was too big and they couldn't attack it in the way they needed to, um, which is a huge criticism of the Biden White House. All right. On your whiteboard, here we go. What actually gets laws passed? What structure of groups of people coming together actually gets laws made and passed inside Washington? Good. What is it? What is it? Mia. Iron triangle. Your iron triangles are filled with what three groups? Good. I got one, two, three. What are they? Colin. There you go. On your whiteboard, please tell me, what is it called when the government is trying to do too much and listen to too many groups of people and they get nothing done? Good. What do you got, Patrick? There you go. On your whiteboard, please tell me, if the White House releases a document saying that today is Samantha Bennett Day, what is that called? Good. Stella, press release. What is, oh, what is the paperwork that the interest groups submit to the Supreme Court that gets them um, a hearing? Yeah, good. What are they, Mia? There you go. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is, do, do, do. What type of ownership do we have here in America for the media? What type of ownership do we have? Good. Free ownership? That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make sense. Help her out there, Rinkus. Private. Private. What does free ownership mean? No, free is wild. On your whiteboard, please tell me what's the opposite of private. Good. What do we got? Estella. State run. On your whiteboard, give me three examples of state run countries with state run media. Good. What do we got, Haley? China, Russia, Iran. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is. Give me three tools of interest groups. Is it second period? Oh my God. It's only second period? What is it, Katie? Yeah. All right, I can't do it, I can't do it. My will to live is...